My parents sent me away to an all-boys boarding school for the first time when I was seven years old. I don't blame them. It was a good decision. I was a shit. <laughs> I was asking too many questions. The big questions. Questions no parents are prepared to answer. How are babies made? What's happened to the dog? Why does Home Alone 3 have a different child? Too many questions. <laughs> Send them away at the earliest possible juncture. Let somebody else explain Macaulay's problems to the boy. <laughs> For five years as a teenager, I studied at probably the least popular all-boys boarding school of them all. I studied at a school called Eton College. I like to drop that quite early into all of my stand-up sets, just in case anyone in the crowd was liking me too much. <laughs> I wasn't a popular kid at Eton, but I wasn't bullied, no. And I'll tell you why I wasn't bullied, because I was house catering rep. <laughs> Nobody fucked around with a house catering rep, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Free. Or to narrow it down, nobody with a nut allergy fucked around with the house catering rep. <laughs> The rest of the boys, not so bothered, admittedly, but those select few, living every day in constant fear of the genuine anaphylactic danger that I posed, <laughs> skulking around in the canteen, big bag of macadamias, poking out my pocket, <laughs> as if to say, you know who I am, and you know what I'm capable of. <laughs> Most exciting times for me as a teenager, going to parties on my holidays, usually about one party a year, just to keep my hand in. <laughs> I wasn't invited by girls my own age, no, I was invited by their mums who in turn were asked to do so by my mum. My mum was like my agent back in the day. A very popular mum on the East Wiltshire social scene. And some of that popularity trickled down. And I'd go to these parties and I'd be a hit, not with the girls my own age, but with their mums. Because the mums trusted me. They knew what they were getting from the other boys at their daughters' parties, getting red wine stains in the carpet and sexually transmitted infections. Not from this guy, they knew what they were getting from me. Box of Quality Street at the start of the night a hand with a washing up after dinner, and a thank you letter in first class post the following day. <laughs> I don't like to boast too much on stage, but I'm not ashamed to say that I write a fucking good thank you letter. <laughs> All the trimmings, ink, fountain pen, vellum, parchment paper, one crazy summer, even experimented with a wax seal. <laughs> the overheads were too crippling in the end, but it was a hell of a summer, I can tell you. <laughs> it's a disappearing art in the digital age, the old-fashioned thank you letter. I loved it, the formality of it writing my address in the top right-hand corner, just in case any of the mums wanted to write back. They never did, but I gave them the option. <laughs> the date underneath, the classic six-figure date formation, day, month, year, unless it was an American family, obviously, in which case, still day, month, year, because they must learn. <laughs> Changing the world one letter at a time. <laughs> Sometimes I was so keen to get started on my thank you letter, I'd start it while still at the party itself. <laughs> Usually in the late hours of the night, a schism would occur. Everyone else would be next door, playing spin the bottle or strip poker. I'd be on my own at the desk, bashing out the first draft. <laughs> deciding whether or not to dedicate an entire paragraph to the Vianetta. <laughs>